Hi, welcome to Read Alouds with Miss Martha. Today we're going to be reading a very special story for a special boy named Wells. Wells is about to turn three years old and we are so excited to be celebrating his birthday with him. Happy birthday, Wells, we love you. The story we're going to read today is called Carlos Digs to China. Do you have a favorite type of food? What types of foods do you enjoy the most? Well, in this story, Carlos, although he loves Mexican food, such as corn, beans, rice, and tortillas, he's starting to get a little tired of it. And he dreams of visiting a place where he can have egg rolls and rice and yummy lo mein. Please follow along as we read Carlos Sticks to China by Jan Romero Stevens and illustrated by Jan Arnold. Carlos Digs to China, story by Jan Romero Stevens, illustrated by Jan Arnold. Carlos Digs to China. Hungry and anxious for the lunch bell to ring, Carlos stared out the window and daydreamed as his teacher pointed to New Mexico on a colorful globe of the world. Now here's where we are, she said. And who can tell me where, what country is on the opposite side of the world? Several of Carlos's classmates yelled out, China, as the teacher spun the globe around to show them they had answered correctly. Beginning a lesson about the faraway country, the teacher told the students if they studied hard, she would give them a special treat during the last week of school. She'd take the whole class downtown to the Golden Star Chinese restaurant where they could try chop suey and fortune cookies and egg rolls. Carlos and his classmates began talking excitedly among themselves and for the next week, they eagerly learned about China. The day before school was out for the summer, the teacher kept her promise and took them to the Chinese restaurant that featured an all-you-can-eat buffet Carlos loaded his plate with fried rice, egg rolls, and chow mein. He went back for chop suey and sweet and sour pork. Then he had jasmine tea and fortune cookies. This food is so much better than plain old beans and rice and tortillas, said a stuffed Carlos to his friend Gloria, who was dipping an egg roll in soy sauce. She nodded. Still thinking about China when school was dismissed, Carlos leaped down the front steps, two at a time, and ran down the dirt road toward his house. He had a great idea, and he couldn't wait to tell Senor Grego, who lived in a small adobe house on one side of Carlos's garden. Senor Grego, it's me, Carlos, he called, knocking on the back door. I'm in a big hurry. I'm going to China. China? And how will you get there? On your bike? asked Senor Grego, amused by his young friend's wild idea. Oh no, I'm digging my way there, said Carlos very seriously. The teacher showed us. China is right on the other side of the world from here. And if I dig a hole straight through the earth, that's where I'll end up. Mas despacio, Carlos, slow down, said Senor Grego. I just made our os dulce. Why don't you sit down and have a bowl? Ordinarily, Carlos loved Senor Grego's specialty of arroz dulce, a rice pudding flavored with cinnamon and raisins. But that day, Carlos had other plans. No thanks, Senor Grego, he said. I'm a little tired of eating the same things all the time. I'm going to China where they have really tasty food every day, like egg rolls and chow mein. Senor Grego shook his head. Carlos, remember. El pasteo siempre se ve más verde del otro lado de la cerca. The grass always seems greener on the other side of the fence. But Carlos wasn't listening. Hurrying back to his house, he grabbed a shovel and a pick and carried them outside. Carlos began digging into the rich brown earth just outside the garden, shoveling clumps of dirt and piling them to one side. It was hard work. And after an hour, the hole he dug was only about a foot deep. On the second day, Carlos's hole grew to more than three feet deep. By the end of the first week, he stood in the hole and the ground was level with the top of his head. He proudly showed off his hard work to his father. He had blisters on his hands and the muscles in his arms ached, but he knew 
that with each shovel full of dirt, he was getting closer to China and the delicious food he would have when he arrived there. Buena suerte, good luck, said Papa, winking and patting Carlos on the back. I hope you make it. One afternoon, Senor Grego stopped by to check on Carlos's progress. He called to him, peering down into the hole. Dios mío, my goodness, the hole is getting deep, said Senor Grego, and he handed him a pair of work gloves and his old miner's helmet. Are you close to China yet? Oh no, not yet, Carlos grinned. I have a long way to go, Senor Grego. China is clear on the other side of the world, you know. I know. Well, I brought you something to eat. Some empanadas my sister made, said Senor Grego. Carlos took a big bite of one of the pastries. It was filled with apples and a sweet sauce. Empanadas are good, but in China, I'll eat something better. Chop suey, Carlos said. A few days later, Carlos's friend Gloria visited him. She brought Carlos a snack, bizcochitos, cookies flavored with cinnamon and anise seed that she baked herself. Carlos took a taste of one of the cookies. These cookies are good, but in China, the food is much better. When I come back, I'll bring you all the fortune cookies you can eat, he told Gloria. Halfway into summer, Carlos's hole grew so deep that he had to borrow a tall wooden ladder to climb down. His mother begged him to forget his project, but friends and neighbors began gathering around at the top of the hole, patting Carlos on the back and encouraging him when he came out to rest. Carlos liked the attention and worked harder than ever, but as the hole grew deeper, it was hard to tell which direction he was digging. Exactly which way was China, Carlos wondered. The hill of dirt that he shoveled out of the tunnel grew higher and higher. He climbed out of the hole several times a day just to greet the onlookers who cheered and lined up to shake his hand. When people asked him when he expected to reach China, Carlos boldly answered, soon, very soon. The mountain pile of earth attracted even more curious people who spilled over from Carlos's yard into Senor Grego's. Neighborhood children slid down the steep dirt pile on the card on cardboard boxes. Families brought picnic baskets and spread out blankets underneath the trees. One man opened a cart and sold green chili burritos and sodas. A news newspaper reporter heard about Carlos's project and took a picture of him. Next to a photograph of Carlos's dirt smudged smiling face, the headline read, Local boy digging to China. Shaking her head, Carlos's mother caught out the article and taped it to the refrigerator. Soon, visitors came from miles away, and the scene beh behind Carlos's house took on a festive air. A mariachi band entered with trumpets and violins, and folklorico dancers in colorful, fancy skirts swirled through the crowds. A nearby field became a parking lot, and a brightly colored hot air balloon floated overhead. The crowd grew more anxious to see when Carlos would break through to China. As the weeks passed, people continued to ask when he would get there. Any day now, he answered confidently. Finally, early one morning, when Carlos was deep in the tunnel, he began to hear muffled voices above him. Could it be that he was finally nearing China? He worked underground later than usual that night, convinced that he would reach his destination the next day, Carlos began to daydream about what it would be like in China. This is the last time I'll be eating tortillas for a while, he said, as he gave Mama a big hug the following morning. By tonight, I'll be in China. Mama shrugged her shoulders, and Carlos hurried off. Climbing deep down to the end of the tunnel, Carlos again heard voices. Taking all day and into the afternoon, he finally began to break through the earth to the other side. Frantically, he continued shoveling with all his might until, all of a sudden, his head popped out just above the ground. Eyes squinting in the bright sun, Carlos took his first look at China. Instead, he saw a circle of familiar looking people peering down at him. 
Senor Gregor, what are you doing in China? asked a very confused Carlos when he recognized his friend among the faces in the crowd. And what are you doing in my green chilies? chuckled Senor Grego as he strained to pull Carlos out of the hole. The clumps of dirt tumbled off Carlos's head and he found himself standing in the middle of Senor Grego's chili batch. Carlos felt a little foolish as he looked over and saw the huge pile of dirt and the ladder still sticking out of the hole in his own yard, just 20 feet away. Just as suddenly as it had gathered, the crowd that was attracted by Carlos's project began to scatter. The mariachi band packed up its instruments and went home, followed by the dancers and the burrito vendor. Soon, the only people left were Senor Grego, Gloria, and Carlos. The old man led Carlos and Gloria into his kitchen, where he ladled out large helpings of arrows dulce for them. Carlos, hungry and exhausted, ate three bowls of the tasty dessert, happy to be out of the dark tunnel and with both of his friends. Will you try to take to China again? Gloria asked Carlos. I don't think so. I've changed my plan, Carlos admitted. A hot air balloon will get me there much faster. But for a long time after that, Carlos lost his appetite for egg rolls, chow mein, and fortune cookies. The end. And if you have this book at home, you can read the recipe for sweet rice, or in Spanish, arroz dulce, and make it yourself. It's very good. Carlos digs to China. So, did you enjoy the story, Carlos digs to China? You know my nephew Wells, his favorite Chinese foods are chicken fried rice and lo mein. Kind of makes me want to go out and get some of those foods right now. Maybe this isn't the best book to read when you're hungry. Again, happy birthday, Wells. Thanks for reading with us today. Have an awesome day.